Hello and welcome back to the Beautiful Things channel. It's been a while, I know, um, but I thought I would jump on today and film a little video for you about what to do when you become completely and utterly overwhelmed with the amount of fabric that you have in your stash, <laughs> the amount of patterns that you have in your stash, and you're actually not doing any sewing because you've completely lost your sojo because you're just bleh and all of it is. I get this all the time from my clients, both in person and online. Um, they've got a fantastically curated collection of fabric. They just don't want to cut into it. And if they do want to cut into it, they don't know what to make with it. Um, they're just completely and utterly overwhelmed. It's really easy to buy loads of patterns. There's always so many great offers and great sales, especially with digital downloads that you can get today. Um, that I know I've got a computer full of patterns that I've never even printed off, let alone done anything with. And I'm sure I'm not alone. In fact, I know I'm not alone. Now my first top tip will be to tidy up your sewing space or your sewing room. Or if you haven't got a sewing space or a sewing room, just tidy up your stuff. Go through your stash, discover what fabrics you actually have and discover what patterns you actually have. I have recorded a separate video on sorting out your sewing room or your sewing space. So I would suggest you watch that first before you watch this one, I'll link it up here. Once you've gone through your fabric and you've decided what fabric you want to keep, it's really important that you have it visible. Um, even if you have to put stuff away, put it in a clear box somewhere so you can see what's in there, or put it in a cupboard or a wardrobe where you can open the doors and you can visually see everything. This is my home stash. It actually isn't too disastrous. I have got a lot more at work. <laughs> but I have it all here. A, it looks pretty behind me when I film a video, but B, I can see it and I can look and I can see what I've got, um, which means it's a really good way of being visually stimulating at all times and helping keeping me inspired. I always recommend shopping your stash first. If you find a pattern that you really want to sew, go to your stash and shop from there before you go online and buy yet more. One of my top tips for that is to bag stuff up. If you buy something specifically to make something with, or if you shop in your stash and you've gone through your patterns, bag them up. Up here, I've got a big basket. Ooh. And in this basket, are all my fabric with associated patterns. So I know this fabric is going to make the perfect Sirocco jumpsuit. I know this fabric's going to make the perfect Tilly and the Buttons Lyra dress. So they are all bagged up and good to go, which means when I have a moment in time, I can simply reach for my basket and cut something out. If you're a thing maker and not a garment maker, you can follow exactly the same principle. I've got more baskets down here on the bottom with smaller projects inside them. This one, for example, I'm planning on making one of these slide down pencil cases. So the pattern's in there and I've actually already cut this out. So it's all cut out and ready to sew. Again, it's a great way of storing your projects. Start with your pattern and your fabric, bag that up, and then when you get a chance, you can cut something out, put the cut out pieces in the pouch, and then you might get half an hour to sew. You can reach for something that's already cut out and stitch it together. It's really satisfying. It's a bit like taking a jigsaw puzzle off the shelf and putting it all together. I'll show you these pouches that I use. They're just from Amazon. They're really sturdy and they zip up really nicely. You can get plenty in them. You can actually get a cut out dress in one of these as well with the pattern. It's a bit of a squeeze, but they do fit quite nicely. I'll link those down below in the description. The other thing, as you've probably already seen, I like to use are Ikea grip seal bags from the food department. These are the largest ones. I think they're four litre and six litre. Does say it on there. But love those they're brilliant and they're really good for just keeping everything together 
So if you're a thing maker, you also want to make sure that your fabrics are well organized. You're not necessarily gonna be able to have them up in big rolls like I've got here, but you can file them away in a more sensible order. Um, depending how much of a stash buster you are will depend what size you like to keep. Um, but personally, I'm not a massive quilter, so I don't tend to keep anything less than about six by six. Um, although more recently I have got into some smaller projects where I am kind of being a bit more frugal and keeping hold of all my scraps. So I would suggest you have your scraps filed away. Those Ikea bags are good for those too. You can have things that are two inches and smaller in one, things that are four inches and smaller in another. I've got my box of fat quarters and special fabrics here and there's a few dumped on the top. Let me just take those off so you can see. But this basket is full of fat quarters. Um, the majority of those are from holidays and trips. I've been told that when you buy fabric on holiday and you're on a fabric ban, it doesn't count because it's a souvenir and not a necessary purchase. <laughs> So this is my basket of souvenirs. Um, so if you're like me, try and be organized with the fabrics that you have so that you can see them, so that you can look at them, so that you can appreciate them and you can go to them when you have a pattern in mind. Shop your stash. Now my second tip is to make sure that you always have your sewing machine to hand. If you're lucky like me, you will have a sewing space at home and you can have your sewing room nice and set up, tidy and good to go. Always have your machine plugged in and ready to go and have your tools nearby. My machine lives on a desk, it's got a set of drawers down the side here and all of my regular everyday tools are in there. As you can see, probably on the shelf behind me, um, I've got my pins, my pin cushion, a little mug with my marking pencils and things. And then just behind that, you probably can't see that, is a pot which has got my scissors, my fabric scissors, my rotary cutter. So everything is there, right next to me where I need it. All my threads are in the drawer by my side. So I've got everything within arm's reach. Now, if you're not lucky enough to have a sewing space, at least try and find a sewing corner, a sewing nook, somewhere where your machine can be. Not necessarily plugged in, but if you've got a little shelf, maybe under the stairs, or a little corner desk in the living room, maybe even the end of your dressing table, somewhere like that where you can have your machine and you can have a drawer or a basket just with your essential tools inside it. It does mean that when the time comes to so you get that rare half an hour and you think I want to sew something you can quickly plug your machine in grab one of your packets that are already cut out and good to go and sit down and actually sew it and in that half an hour you could have made something and it's so motivating if you don't have a sewing space set up at home then this is what's going to happen you're going to have a rare half an hour you're going to think to yourself oh I quite fancy doing a bit of sewing you're going to reach for that packet of things that you've already cut out um, you're going to get your machine from upstairs, the cupboard, wherever it lives. You're going to cart it downstairs. You're going to pop it on the dining room table. You're going to plug it all in, find an extension cable, get the iron set up, get the iron plugged in, go back upstairs, get your toolbox, come down, have everything ready. Oh, look, 20 minutes has passed already. You've only got 10 left to sew. It just doesn't happen. People don't get their sewing machines out unless they know they've got half a day or a day to actually get a good chunk of sewing done. So try to set up that sewing space at home. Now I do have a lot of people that come to me and say, Claire, I simply don't have the space. Um, and I say to them, did you work at home during lockdown? And they say, yes. And I say, okay. Did you have somewhere which was set up as a little home office? Yeah, I had a little corner under the stairs where I put my computer and I used to sit and I had my little office at home. And I said, right, have you gone back to work? Yep, back in the office. So what's happened to that office space? <laughs> when I ask them that question, it normally turns a cog in their brain and they think, if I could make time and space for myself to work from home during lockdown, I can certainly make time and space to work from home for me. So don't use that as an excuse. There is room somewhere in your home for your sewing machine to live in an accessible place where you can get it switched on and use it in a very quick turnaround of time. Go and find that space if you don't have one already.
So once you've tidied up your sewing space, got your sewing space sorted and ready, tidied up your fabric, worked out what you're keeping and what you're getting rid of, gone through your patterns and decided what you'd like to make um, and bagged everything up and sorted it all out, put it all together so you know what's what, then it's time to start working in bite-sized chunks of time. Sure, you may well be lucky enough to have a whole day one day where you can sew and that's great, but the majority of us just have bite-sized chunks of time that we can have a little bit of me time. And the more organised you can be, the more valuable those bite-sized chunks of time will become. So start to prepare your projects. So let's take, for example, I'm going to reach just randomly into my basket here. I'm going to choose two lots of fabric. And they don't go, so that's okay. It doesn't matter. Randomly, I'm going to choose two lots of fabric. I'd like to turn these fabrics into a zipper pouch. So I'm going to put these fabrics and I'm going to take the pattern for the zipper pouch. I'm going to get the zip. I'm going to get the thread that I'm going to use to sew it together. And I'm going to put it into a zipper wallet. That probably took me 10 minutes, 15 minutes in total. That's all the time I've got for today and that's fine. I'm going to put it to one side. Tomorrow I get myself another 15, 20 minutes. So I'm going to grab it back out again. And this time I'm going to cut my pieces out to make my project. And then I'm going to stop, put them back in my pouch and set them away to one side. A couple of days might pass by, but then I get a valuable 15 minutes and I think, oh, wonderful. I can actually have a little go at getting started. So I'm going to pull my pouch back out and I'm going to stitch the zip in. I've stitched the zip in, I'm done can't do any more but then a day later I get a whole hour and a half I can reach for my little project bag and I can finish it I can finish it get it completed get it done file away that plastic pouch put my fabric back into the scrap drawer and I am done breaking down your projects is such a great way of getting things actually completed you might just have I don't know an hour one day and you might package up seven or eight things you might then have an hour another day and you might cut out seven or eight things um, and then you can then get maybe a whole day of sewing and you've got a whole load of projects that you can just sit down and put together so always look at your projects with chunks in mind don't just look at a project as something big scary and overwhelming that you're going to have to create in one session break everything down you make an address for instance get your pattern trace it off one day cut the paper pattern out another day choose your fabric another day and all your haberdashery and all the bits and pieces that you need put it together in a pouch cut it out another day iron the interfacing onto any sections that need interfacing on another day and then you can break the pattern down into bite-sized chunks. You can either sew it together all in one day, or you could do the bodice in one day, the skirt in another day, attaching the two together in another day, hemming it in another day. It's up to you how you break it down. But please don't think of projects as something big and ominous, because they will just become big and ominous. They will sit heavy on your shoulders and you will never get it done. Now my final tip will be to find somewhere that you can escape to. If you've got lots of projects that are cut out, prepped, ready to go, or you want to just spend some time having a whole session of cutting out, find your local sewing studio. Now if you're lucky and you live in Essex, you can come to my studio, BTHQ, Beautiful Things in Brentwood. If you're not, Find your local craft shop, fabric shop, sewing studio. Many, many, many shops offer space where you can go and sit and either use their sewing machines or use their cutting tables. Um, we have open sewing sessions almost every day of the week where you can come along and use our space. When you can go somewhere else and you're not doing it at home, you're able to switch off from what needs doing at home and you're not going to get distracted by the postman bringing a parcel to the door, the cats needing feeding, the kids needing picking up from school um, or post that comes through the door and needs dealing with. If you can take yourself away, even just for half a day, and just spend the day cutting out, prepping, um, or spend the day sewing together the things that you've already cut out and prepped, you're gonna feel so much better. Obviously, it's not gonna work for everybody. You're not all gonna have lovely places that you can escape to, and some of you won't be able to necessarily afford to go to classes or go to sessions um, in your local sewing studio. 
but hopefully some of the tips that I've shared with you today will help you feel a little bit less overwhelmed. And just remember, one step at a time. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all again soon.